a breath of fresh air, soul food. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an interesting point in time. European debates got closer to home over the past few years, whether it's about the vaccine strategy or green passports to allow us to travel this summer, whether it is about the freedom of speech or social justice or climate change, the EU has a role to play and the impact or lack thereof on each of our lives fuels the discussions from north to south, from east to west and vice versa. The next speaker is bound to invite you to lean in, to get a seat at a table, to make your voice heard. Madam President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, the floor is yours. Monsieur le Président Macron. President Macron. Mr. President uh, Sassoli, Prime Minister Costa, ladies and gentlemen, dear European citizens, I am delighted to finally be back here in Strasbourg for what is a very special Europe Day. This city symbolizes a major chunk of our history. It is only normal, therefore, that we should be here to speak about our future. And when I think of this future and of this conference, I am reminded of a former Strasbourg resident, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, and particularly his book, The Earth of Men, published just before the Second World War. In his unique and poetic style, he gave life to the emotions of fear and pain, love and hope that live in each and every one of us. He reminds us of the importance of living alongside one another, but also alongside the natural world that surrounds us. And our duty to hand over a better world to our children. Although the backdrop today is different, what he says to us rings true for today's world. There is a particular quote that resonates for me because it represents what Europe is about uh, and the duty of this conference, and I quote, to love one another is not about gazing into each other's eyes. It is about looking together in the same direction. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the task and the opportunity ahead of all of us. The conference is for all Europeans to debate a shared vision of what we want of our union. Of course, I'm conscious that there's always skepticism and cynicism wherever Europe debates its future or launches a project of this nature. So we must ensure it is not an intellectual policy exercise or a closed political compromise. We should be honest that the conference is not a panacea or a solution to every problem. And we must listen to all voices, whether critical or complementary, and ensure that we properly follow up on whatever is agreed. But I do believe that this conference is a real opportunity to bring Europeans together and to rally around a common ambition for our future, just as previous generations did. And we should also not underestimate the power of good that it could do for people individually and for society as a whole. The point is that the European Union must be whatever Europeans want it to be. Of course, the start of the conference is not the time to predict or prescribe outcomes. 
But there are certain dichotomies and issues that we should attempt to resolve. For example, some feel Europe is too close and too involved in their lives. And for others, it is far too far away and too remote and too detached. This is an opportunity for Europeans to help find the right balance. For some, Europe is too institutional and mechanical in the way that it works. This is an opportunity to see how we can simplify and make it more down to earth where it is needed. For some, the narrative of peace is not as compelling as for others. This is an opportunity to help build a new common purpose for all Europeans. We see how important that is when we look at the world around us. Globalized, but fragmented, full of contradictions and confrontations. It reminds us of the importance of a shared sense of purpose and that none of us can go it alone. The pandemic has been traumatic for people in Europe and around the world. It will be a formative part of so many lives and of so many parts of society. And like all trauma, we need to find a way to talk about it if we want to move beyond it. And there is no better way to do that then by offering perspective, hope, and the ability to change things for the better. And this is why I believe it is such an important moment for young people in particular to have their say. This pandemic stole more than a year from them. It stole experiences and emotions that every young person needs. It stole fun and friendship that shape people forever. It stole opportunities from them to grow, to learn, and to take risks. And more than anything, it made so many people, old or young, feel anxious, lonely, and simply less in control of their lives and their future. For the first time in a generation, more people worry that their children will not be better off than them. This shows that we need a new form of solidarity and social justice between generations. Es geht um Gerechtigkeit. This is about justice and rights, not only within our current society, but across the generations. The recent groundbreaking court rulings in several member states reflect this. They talk about the responsibility to take clear action to address our over-exploitation of nature and the environment. We can't give young people back the time that has been taken away from them by the pandemic. But we can rebuild better and in a fairer manner for and with them. We need to act now and young people must play a central role in this change. The change, the challenge, excuse me, is a major one. Paradoxically, an awful lot needs to change so that the conditions for human life remain the same. Fundamental changes are needed to ensure that the next generations can still enjoy nature. We need to change so that our grandchildren can still experience spring, summer, autumn and winter. But fundamental change does not come about via court rulings but via politics. And that's why I believe we should use this conference 
in order to hold a genuine structured, structured dialogue between the generations so that we can discuss how we can protect the fundamental conditions needed for life. There is as much at stake as there was in 1950 when Schumann made his declaration. At the time, he was looking at the desolation and destruction caused by war. But let's not kid ourselves. There is just as much at stake now because climate change can rapidly produce the same destructive effects as a war. Beyond this is that Europe has always been at its best when it is reverse engineered. We are at our boldest when we first set an ambitious goal or have to act out of necessity, often without competence or precedence. This is the Europe that rises to the challenge, the Europe that just does it because it needs to be done. It is not so long ago that the environment was a fringe or a peripheral issue for the European Union. But it is now the most central issue for our generation and for the generations to come. Mesdames et Messieurs, l'exemple. Ladies and gentlemen, showing the example showing empathy towards young people since the beginning of the pandemic is a source of inspiration to us, uh, giving us hope and a sense of responsibility that we need to build a better world. It was just barely a month ago that I got a very, very emotional reminder of that when I became a grandmother for the very first time. The first caress with my young granddaughter was one of those moments that really, really allows you to get your priorities right and reminds you of what really matters in life. During that moment of tenderness, of love, she showed me one thing, that we must never forget that we always owe it to, to the world to allow them to believe in the world uh, and that we are old enough to make that difference happen. This is what brings generations together. Holding this little creature in my arms, I did what all new parents and new grandparents do and always have done. I thought of all of the opportunities and I try to imagine the kind of world uh, that she would grow up in. Would there be forests? Will there be any fauna left? Or maybe it will only be remaining in history books or films? What will jobs look like? What about technology that she will need? And inequalities and social disparity? Will they be worse or better? And what will Europe uh, do? What will she defend in her life? Will she be respectful, more diversified, more united? Or will she be divided uh, as often we were in the past? These matters may seem too large or too distant, whereas there are so many immediate challenges. However, the course of our action will determine the answers that we will be looking for tomorrow, and that's precisely why we need this conference and why we need uh, to get it started now. We will tackle this task with humility, recognizing that not everything is ideal but also with a real sense of proud uh, knowing where we're coming from and the conviction of what must be done at all times. And I will conclude where I started with Antoine de Saint-Exupéry once again, because he 
inspired Jean Moret with his sentence. The most beautiful profession a man can have is that of bringing men together. It's up to us now to keep on doing that. Thank you. Long live Europe. Thank you very much, President.